Which uncomplicated yet highly efficient life hack surprises you that it isn't more widely known? Story 1. Put your keys on top of the thing you need to remember to bring with you in the morning. Edit. Some of you read this as a way to remember your keys, or not lose your keys. Sure, I suppose, but I use it as a way to remember the thing, since I'll always remember my keys. Story 2. If you're ever learning something, whether at a work meeting or class or from a YouTube video, have a notebook where you take 30, 60 seconds to jot down a summary. In your own words, write when you finish, not detailed notes, which you can take while the class meeting is going if you need to, but the equivalent of a TV guide blurb summarizing what you learned. Not only will rewording summarizing help you retain whatever you learned, but over the years you'll have your own personal book of knowledge to reference as a jumping off point for learning more. Story 3. Clean as you go when cooking. Wipe down surfaces, clean a dish or pot or pan when something needs to simmer for a bit. Wipe down your knives after use and dry them with a towel and put them back in the knife block. I learned it from sister's husband who is a chef. It makes cooking so much more pleasant. Also, mise en place. Prep all your ingredients beforehand and have them ready. Again, it makes cooking more fun and less arduous and the dishes turn out better. Story 4. You can put almost any raw vegetable into a smoothie, and as long as there's enough sweet fruit in there too, apples, bananas, pineapple, oranges, whatever, it will taste good. You don't even need a recipe. Just throw a bunch of healthy stuff in the blender and hit the button. You can get way weirder with it than you'd expect and still not mess it up. They're expensive at restaurants, but cheap and ridiculously easy at home. I'm 40 years late on this trend because I didn't discover how shockingly simple it was until about a week ago. Story 5. When navigating a crowded place with people going every which way, focus your gaze upon the spot you're walking towards. We look at each other's eyes when trying to avoid bumping into each other and maintaining your gaze on the spot you're headed allows people to subconsciously see how to avoid you and will adjust their path accordingly. You won't have any more of those awkward encounters where you're looking at another person and you both keep trying to turn the same direction. I read this trick on here years ago and use it all the time in stores, the mall, etc. And it really does work. Maybe it's because I look like a psychopath and people are trying to avoid me altogether. But either way, it works. Story 6. Learning to cook started way too late in life. You're paying a fraction of the cost to make something specifically tailored to your taste. And the process is fun, creative, and experimental in the way that the best hobbies are. I stopped drinking and learned to cook during the pandemic. I cannot express the difference it's made to my finances and health. I suddenly have so much more money for fun stuff and never worry about a belly sticking out anymore. Start young and learn to love doing it. Your life will improve dramatically. Story 7 Meal Prep plus Freezer plus Instant Pot. My life has changed. Once every two months, prep a bunch of frozen meals that you can just throw in the Instant Pot. You literally just throw raw meat, spices, etc. into Ziplocs and freeze it. When hungry, you pop this meal popsicle into the Instant Pot for 30 mins and have amazing hot meal. Minimal dishes, both during prep since it's just chopping and throwing in bags and after cooking. So easy non-cooks in the house can throw it in. And cheaper since you buy everything in bulk and spend less throughout the month. Less food wastage too. Pinch of Yum has a bunch of great recipes. Story 8. Be really good to a few solid people at your workplace. Lend them a hand here and there. Bring them their favorite small treat here and there. Therefore, if you break bad with your supervisor, you have references from colleagues who would happily vouch for you. Currently in this position right now, I am so thankful I made great connections. They've all either called or messaged me that it's not the same without me after I had had enough. Again, it's super uncomplicated to just be nice to people. People will remember that you were kind more than they'll remember your favorite color. Story 9. If you always smell bad when working out, take a shower beforehand. The reason we smell is, usually, because of the bacteria on our skin. Washing it off before will significantly cut down on the odor. Everyone smells when we work out, so don't get too worked up about it. But if you feel like you smell especially bad, or if you're getting complaints, this works. Also, hang your gym clothes up to dry as soon as you get home. When you wash them, replace the fabric softener with vinegar. Use about half as much vinegar as you would fabric softener. Vinegar has some antimicrobial properties and will also release any leftover soap. This will kill most scents trapped in your clothes. When you dry them, avoid dryer sheets. All these will do is help trap any remaining odor in the fabric. Story 10. 
I will throw it out there, but no one seems to care about their job or climbing the ladder anymore. You will never get promoted by doing good work or working hard because that's what a company pays you for. If you solve business problems and put it together in the form of a recommendation with financials, that is what causes you to stand out. It does not matter if they buy into your solution or not. The simple fact that you show willingness and or the ability to look at things from a different perspective will put you on their radar. Once the next promotion comes up, you will be on their mind and will easily stand out over those that worked harder than you did. Management wants to promote the ability to foster ideas slash solutions and not necessarily the ability to work hard at repetitive actions. Story 11. When do you need to wake up in the morning? Count backwards about seven, eight hours. Then add a little time for falling asleep and nighttime awakenings. That's your bedtime. About an hour before, start winding down. Put down work and don't watch anything you'll get hooked on. Dim lights. Set an alarm for that time and you may never need a morning alarm. Plus, you'll be fully recovered and more efficient and productive and clear-headed. Many people skimp on sleep because they don't have time. But often they would have more time if they were more well-rested. Story 12. You don't have to answer your phone if you don't want to. Neither calls nor messages. It can wait. Playing with your kid taking that bath, finishing the chapter, or whatever it is you don't want to interrupt is way more important. If it's a life and death matter, they'll call again, and again, and again, trust me, you won't miss it. I have a rule with my family, in fact, when I don't answer the phone, but it's really, really important. They should call immediately a second time, then I'll know and answer. BTW, your phone has a silent mode too. Story 13. Trying to drill in holes in a wall so something else with can hang exactly onto it with end nails slash screws. Stick a piece of masking tape across the thing that will go on the wall, on the wall side of the thing, covering all the most important holes you need. Use a pencil and mark the tape on top of where the holes are on the thing. Take the tape off and carefully transfer it to stick on the wall at the location you want the thing to hang. Use a spirit level to make sure the tape on the wall isn't wonky. Drill through the tape at the marked locations. Use screws nails as necessary. Hang the thing up on the wall. Benefits. Holes will be in exactly the right place unless your tape has wrinkled or is torn. You will also have no pencil marks on the wall. It's also far quicker, and you don't need to measure anything about the holes' relation to each other. Story 14. Dawn dish soap has a million effective uses. Mix with water and spray it on your house's vinyl siding. Let sit and then hose off. It's a flea killer for dogs, but not a flea preventer. A small amount in the bath gets your pup's fleas killed. It unclogs toilets. A good deal of poop is fat and grease, which Dawn fights. Pour a few squirts in your bowl, a couple cups of steaming hot water, wait 15 mins or so and flush. 30 mins for tough clogs. Once a week I spray a mixture in my shower 30, 60 minutes before showering. Then I jump in the shower with a handheld power scrubber, gently run it over the walls and door, and then rinse with hot water. No mold, no soap scum, or buildup. Anything with gunk on it, jewelry, tools, etc. Soak in a water dawn mixture and if it's not completely dissolved, it'll be easily removed with a towel or by rinsing in water. Story 15. If you've got an itch that won't go away, don't spend a fortune on creams. Just run the area under the hottest water you can handle without burning. It will disappear almost instantly with an amazing feeling. It doesn't cure the issue, but my God does. It relieves symptoms for a few days. I had an all-over body amoxicillin rash, jumped in the hottest bath I could handle. Done. Another time I had scabies in between fingers and hand, ran under hot water. Done. My sister was complaining about having itchiness on hand, rash, that creams weren't helping. I told her about it. She didn't believe me, but I managed to get her to humor me. As she ran it under hot water, she started laughing like crazy as it stopped the itching in seconds. Story 16. A lot of cooking only requires one pot and no utensils. With a proper no-stick surface, you can make eggs without touching a spatula. You can make mac and cheese without a ladle and other small pot-based things. It's all about how to move the pan pot around. Keep it so it's touching the heat, but swirl it around. If it's not mixing well, just add a little milk, water, or juice, and it will mix more evenly. Keeping it on the heat will then eventually evaporate some of the liquid and not overcook the food. This takes a lot of practice, but best way to start is the mac and cheese. Once you boil your noodles, get rid of the liquid, put it back into the pot, put butter in it, swirl it around while keeping it on the heat until melted, put the powder or cheese in, don't stop swirling over heat. You'll see that parts of it clump. This is okay. Add just a little milk at a time. 
Swirl it for a minute. Repeat until the powder or cheese is even. Story 17. A little over a year ago, I started getting up 30 minutes earlier. It's been a total game changer. It forces me to go to bed earlier, meaning I'm spending less time mindlessly looking at my phone. With that extra 30 minutes in the morning, I probably spend about 15, 20 of it in prayer. This is a great way to focus myself for the day. With the other 10, 15 minutes, I'm able to get ready for my day without being in a panicked rush. Because my day is getting off to a better start, I'm way more likely to work out before work. As a result, I'm more focused, have more energy, have a better mood, and am in better shape than I was a year ago. As a reformed night owl, it wasn't easy, though. It probably took about two months for my sleep patterns to adjust. But now there's no way I'm going back to the old me. Story 18. If there is a blizzard expected overnight, put your windshield wipers up. Easily peel garlic by putting it in a small closable container and shake it vigorously. The garlic peels itself. If you're getting behind on cleaning or chores because of depression, set a timer for 20 minutes. Use those 20 minutes to put clothes in a hamper, toss trash, put things that belong in places away, dishes in the dishwasher, and when that timer goes off, you're done. You were productive. Lastly, tongue scraper. Story 19. Buying a headboard is the easiest way to look like an adult who has it together to potential dates, especially if you're at an age where a lot of your peers forego them. It's a fully not fun and fully practical purchase that shows you make adult purchases. They show up for fairly cheap at thrift stores and can be less than a new video game. Story 20. I started opening letters mail from the side now. If you just tilt the envelope to the side so the document slides to the other side, you can tear off the opposite end super easy. It keeps the envelope nice and easy to stack and go through later if you need to. It beats just ripping it across the top and having a mess of a tear across the entire top. Story 21. Flossing in the shower. I was a lifelong terrible flosser and had the dental issues to prove it. Now I just do it in the shower daily, while my hair conditioner is doing its thing. No spittle on the mirror, I'm enjoying the hot water on my back and much easier to be consistent. I haven't had any cavities brewing since I started and observably reduced my periodontist risk. Story 22. Use ground-up oats to thicken sauces or soups. Difficult to detect and adds a small amount of fiber to your diet. If you also have a sauce that is too salty, you can put dry oats in a cheesecloth and place into the sauces. It will absorb water along with the salt similar to a potato without taking as much time. Eat it. Regarding point number two, the oats will also take a large amount of liquid with it, so don't use too much, and only if you're okay with concentrating the sauce. Story 23. Always turn down overdraft protection if possible for your checking debit account. It is way better to get your card declined than paying $100 plus or more in overdraft fees when the bank already knows you're broke. I forget if it's still legal for the bank to rearrange your charges to put a large charge that puts you over at the bottom, then a bunch of smaller charges above it, leading to a cascade of overdraft fees, but they at least used to totally do that. I've kept the same account for many years with a bank that's been known fairly recently for some nasty, shady stuff. But the account doesn't have overdraft protection, so I'm happy. Story 24. Keep a cheap extended grabber in your vehicle and near your bed. The cheap Blue Harbor Freight ones work great for that. I used the one in my Jeep today when I dropped piece of trash when I was sticking some trash in the parking lot trash can I drove up to. Didn't have to drive forward and get out of the Jeep to get it. The other day I used the one near my bed because I dropped a pair of scissors between the bed and wall just past the leg of my bed desk. Otherwise, I would have had to get out of bed, lean over the bed to get it with my hand. Story. 25. The first time I had a meeting with an old boss of mine, I walked in and sat down and she said, Where's your notebook? Seemed kind of old-fashioned, so I told her I didn't have one, and she told me to go get one and never come to a meeting with her without one again. It was life-changing advice. I now take detailed notes in every meeting, no matter how unimportant it seems at the time, and it has been a lifesaver on countless occasions. You will never forget a detail or comment if you've written it down. It doesn't detract from your focus or attention since you'd just be sitting there listening anyway and actually demonstrates to whoever is running the meeting that you actually are paying attention. Also, when you're writing notes, remember to add a date as well as a title to each note. Trust me, it will make it much easier to go back and find notes from a particular meeting or event. Story 26 doing things for future me. My procrastination tendencies, ESP as a PhD candidate, is just sit and stare at whatever I am doing. I'm always longing to play video games, watch a show, but I even procrastinated on doing that. So I sort of make time to do it, 
force myself to play the games, in the end I end up getting my other tasks done and be more productive. Also, for the first time in my life, I bought two pairs of shoes at the store instead of one to last me for a bit. I'm at about eight pairs in the rotation right now, first time ever.